Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MSP. This is Ukraine War News Update, second part there on for the 14th of June 2024. Uh, a little bit late today, um, things to do, people to see. So we're going to start with the US bilateral security agreement that got signed off between Ukraine and obviously the US yesterday. Uh, Biden was saying some pretty important things. Zelensky has talked about this agreement in very favourable terms but there may be some serious caveats to apply so i did the breaking news update on this last night I, I will cover some of that ground again the u.s will provide fighter jet squadron that's right plural squadrons including but not limited to f-16s which is kind of the headline from this um biden also he talked about a number of things at a joint press conference on the signing of the security agreement our position on the use of long-range weapons on russian territory does not change they can be used in the positions we previously agreed to and no change there sadly i've enlisted the support of five allied countries everything we have in terms of weapons and everything ukraine needs will be provided that's interesting don't really know what's going on there but um uh, i don't know if that's in terms of air defense capabilities uh, we know that you, what ukraine is capable of if we give ukraine the means it can fully defend itself yes 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 now there's lots of good language coming up from that i talked you through this last night let's run over some of it again this is what Zelensky himself has said about the uh, agreement this agreement is about security protecting human life fostering cooperation strengthening our nations it includes steps to guarantee sustainable peace and benefits everyone globally especially uh, because Russia's war against Ukraine is a real global threat. I thank President Biden for his leadership reflected in this agreement and for his support for Ukraine throughout the years. I also thank our teams for making sure that the details of the agreement are really good. I thank every Ukrainian soldier and all of our people whose courage made this level of alliance between the Ukraine and US possible. I'm proud of our people and what Ukraine can do. I'm very grateful to all Americans who strengthen American leadership, right? He's just said, I thank Biden for leadership. I'm grateful to all Americans who strengthen American leadership. So I think this is very much couching the success of Ukraine and the aid from the US in, in terms of this is coming from Biden and you need to keep supporting Biden. I think that's that's what I would read from that. And I know there'll be certain Republicans out there will be pretty angry with that, but... The reality is that if Trump gets in, you are not going to see this forthright support that Biden has advocated and very clearly uh, discussed at places like Normandy D-Day commemorations um, and then here at the conference and elsewhere. He's, the, the rhetoric is beyond doubt, right, from Biden. He is constrained by Congress and we have not heard any of the rhetoric that's similar to that. We've heard childish rhetoric of, oh, I'll, I'll get it solved, I'll get the wall solved in a day. And we've heard recently that actually other things to do with, with Trump would indicate that he's just not a big supporter of Ukraine at all. And I did a whole video on that. So I think this is, I think Zelensky knows this pretty obviously. And he's banking on people supporting in Congress, such as the Republicans, the responsible Republicans. And you've got to remember there's an overwhelming majority of both the House of Representatives and the Senate supporting these aid bills. So this is a very powerful, loud few, the MAGA, who are doing the, um, the work essentially of Putin. He continues, the document includes a detailed, lengthy, bind legally binding part. Okay, this is the important part that we're going to come into in a minute. The document includes a detailed, legally binding part ensuring the reliability of America's support for our independence. Um, US security commitments are based on sustainable security and defense support during this war and for the period of peace after it. So it's not just about now, this is about going forward and a, a stopgap between NATO accession and now. We will ensure peace. The agreement clearly states that America supports Ukraine's efforts to gain victory in this war. Really talking openly about victory now, not just in for as long as it takes. The agreement includes provisions for advanced defense systems like Patriot. So they're getting multiple Patriots out of this, it would appear, and fighter jet squadrons. So it includes Includes provisions for doesn't necessarily mean we are going to get this and also doesn't talk about time frames however he says that's right plural squadrons including but not limited to f-16 so people are thinking right and that squadron is about 15 to 30 planes so 15 to multiple squadrons that's at least 30 planes coming from the u.s in some way f-16s are going to be part of that, but could be F-18A Hornets. I doubt it'd be anything like the A-10 um, Warthogs because you'd need definitely need complete air superiority to get that, but maybe that's a, a thing for, to kick down the, 
down into the long weeds, maybe that will happen. I don't know. Document also details supply of necessary weapons, a joint production and strengthening of our country's defense industries through cooperation. This will provide not only security, but also good jobs for Ukrainians and Americans. So it's talking about the benefits to the US and not just to Ukraine. We've talked about that so often before. Importantly, the agreement uh, addresses Russia's responsibility for this war and its attempts to destroy Ukrainians. Americans, su America supports fair compensation for the damage caused by Russian strikes and the work uh, on enabling the use of frozen Russian assets to protect and rebuild Ukraine. The agreement includes sanctions and export controls to make Russia feel the pain from what it is doing against the freedom of peoples. I appreciate that the philosophy of our security agreement is in fact the philosophy of NATO. The issue of NATO is covered throughout the text, through the text. The document states that the US supports supports Ukraine's future membership in NATO and sees the agreement as a bridge to NATO membership. It's cru crucial for all Ukrainians and Europeans to know there will be no security deficit in Europe which tempts the aggressor to war. We are clearly defining everything, cooperating for victory. This is really important. We are clearly defining. So the language apparently in, the, in I assume, in this bilateral security agreement, agreement is much clearer than we've heard before. We're going to help you for as long as it takes. That's BS. We need to know that what the end goal is. So cooperating for victory, making peace guarantees effective and ensuring necessary security for our people. So he thanks Biden and his team and America, etc., etc. Okay, really, really great. And he says, you know, truly historic day. And I think this really is. The, the question is how Biden finding is this and what the time frames uh, attached to this what what what's the finer details if you like i mean a nice little um infographic here talks about the different uh, provisions for for the agreement the us will facilitate ukraine's accession to nato on the in the occasion of a new attack on ukraine immediate consultations to determine ukraine's needs ukraine's territorial integrity must be fully restored the united states will provide long-term military assistance details not specified ukraine is committed to reforming the judiciary customs corporate governance etc strengthening the integration of defense systems of ukraine and the us ukraine will reform yuko Baron from so that's their state-run uh, um, military industrial concern. Uh, the agreement will last for 10 years with the uh, a possibility of extension. So I find this one interesting. Ukraine's territorial integrity must be fully restored. So that's 1991 borders. This is this is a really big document. I'd love to know the exact details of it, but, but it seems really, really uh, on point. Now, Mick Ryan, the, the retired uh, Australian general, has talked about this. He said there are four key elements to the agreement. First, the agreement set out a 10-year horizon, but the deal won't be ratified by the US Congress, and hopefully Ukraine will be in NATO well before the 10-year period ends. Um, second, there is heavy security focus as expected. This includes defence materiel, training, industrial collaboration, joint planning, cybersecurity and intelligence elements. Third, it is a limited commitment. There is no commitment from the US to deploy combat forces to support Ukraine. It falls well short of NATO Article 5. It's not a formal alliance and does not replicate treaties with Japan, Australia and other allies. So it is not an exact, it's not taken from the blueprint of other ones. This is different to other security agreements um, and where others might have something like if you are attacked again after a peace agreement that has been sorted out with Russia and Russia then attacks you again, we will help by sending our troops, a kind of bilateral Article 5 arrangement. This doesn't appear to have that. Fourth, it is more... It is about more than security. The agreement includes provisions on demining cooperation on economic reform, recovery, governance, justice and anti-corruption. This is a big piece of legis or big big agreement. Uh, what does this all mean? Ultimately, the agreement codifies what the US is already doing. There is almost nothing new here. And it should be noted that the agreement can only be implemented with resources appropriated by the US Congress. While there is a current funding package, there is no guarantee of future packages, unfortunately. Okay, so going to the CNN, and they, they, they've spent quite a lot of time talking about all these different elements. Um, they say, you know, what's included in a deal, what Biden has said, what Zelensky said. Russian sanctions and a looming US election and how that can uh, affect this. Uh, the pledge is an ex executive agreement making it less formal than a treaty but not necessarily binding for any future presidents. So there might be a bit of unknown here. So some people saying yeah it can just be over, over um, it, it can be sort of ripped up by Trump. Um, former President Biden Trump, the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, has not explicitly said whether he would continue support for Ukraine if he wins in November, saying only he would negotiate a quick end to the Russia-Ukraine war without explaining how. So lots to be cleared up there. Um, 
Zelensky says, uh, yeah, it's his bridge between now and accession to NATO. Something else that came out that's super, 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 super important. Other countries will have to wait while the US focuses on providing air defence support for Ukraine, Biden says. So we have acquired, says Biden, a commitment from five countries so far for Patriot batteries and other air defence systems. So this is the five countries thing. Uh, as well as we've let it be known for those countries that are expecting from us air defence systems in the future that they're going to have to wait. So at the moment, there are, is it 12 systems can be made a year by RTX? Is that right? But they're also uh, generating the capabilities within Europe to and capacity to build components of the system. And as well, Lockheed Martin, the same with the wet, with the um, munitions. The, sorry, the ordnance. So this is really good news that if you've got, if you're waiting for a, a Patriot, and we've been talking about this, well, why didn't they order things one year ago, two years ago, whatever? Okay, so they haven't. People are on the waiting list. They're getting their stuff made now. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. So the US says, right, we want 12 Patriot batteries, or the five countries come together and say, we want five, 12 Patriot batteries. And those 12 are going to go straight to Ukraine. There's no waiting. At least they'll go as soon as they are made. Um, everything we have is going to Ukraine until their needs are met. And then we will make good on the commitments we made to other countries. That is massively significant. Honestly, huge. Uh, I, almost more important than, than the squadrons of jets, as far as I'm concerned, in the immediate future. Because I talked earlier about what there's no point spending $50 billion on reconstructing Ukrainian cities when you could spend $10 billion up front and stop the stuff from getting destroyed in the first place with 10 um, Patriot batteries. Well, here you go. You're like, let's get that stuff in. Let's have enough to protect, enough air defense to protect those cities and the vital infrastructure and, and the air bases and have enough to put near the front lines and take out the Russian uh, aircraft. Brilliant. Um, he, Zelensky's also received assurances from China that they'll not sell weapons to Russia, however much that is worth. I mean, that is just the word of the Chinese leader Xi Jinping. I've had a phone conversation with the leader of China um, by phone, obviously. He said that he will not sell any weapon to Russia. Um, we'll see if he is a respectable person. He will not. But he gave me his word. And it is just the word, right? Um and he says, Zelensky says he thinks future leaders of the United States will continue to support Ukraine. I'm sure that this nation chooses leaders and presidents. And it seems to me that no matter what the nation chooses, first and foremost, it seems to me that everything depends on the unity within this or that state. And if the people are with us, any leader will be with us this struggle for freedom. Um, that's the real time translator. So it's a bit it's a bit messed up, but that, that's the translation. Now. I hope that if Trump does get in, you would get the Department of Defense and national security, existing uh, national security infrastructure, communicating really quite how serious this all is. And you might get a sudden realization from some of the, the more MAGA um, lawmakers and Trump's own team that actually this, this requires the US to stay the course. What I'm worried about is if you put someone like Mike Flynn in, in as his like in charge of national security or defense or whatever you're in a lot of trouble because you've got an absolute wing nut deciding on what you, the us's approach to ukraine will be um and yes yeah, so uh, this is all really important now colby badwa his his opinion is as an appendix um, I've just read a claim in Ukrainian media that the agreement will be submitted to Congress for approval in both chambers. I've not seen any reporting in American media that the president has any intention of doing this. So I'm skeptical right now. That said, what this would likely be referring to is the case Zablocki Act, the provision of US code, which has been scarcely adhered to by the executive branch historically, requires executive agreements to be submitted to Congress within 60 days. The constitutionality of this law has been subject to considerable debate, which explains why the executive has seldom abided by it without much consequence. So you might have to do something within 60 days or you might not have to bother. It could be that President Biden intends to comply with this reporting requirements and seek to vote a vote for approval for the agreement. It's possible that such an effort could 
clear the much lower bar of a simple majority in both houses but i don't believe that would fundamentally change anything the appropriation process will still be no easier than it was last time and then he could be referring to this so this is a ukrainska pravda saying ukraine security agreement with the us to be submitted to congress it will be legally binding okay um so according to European Pravda, Ukraine and the US signed a 10-year security operation on Thursday. It's important to note that the document beginning with its name varies from past agreements signed by Ukraine. It's, if Ukraine signed security cooperation agreements with other major allies starting with the UK, the agreement with the US would be known as a bilateral security agreement. The legal procedure is likewise unique. The American security agreement was the first to require that this interstate agreement be filed with the UN. So this is nothing I'd heard elsewhere. So, quote, for Ukraine, this will be the first legally binding security agreement. Until now, all other agreements that Ukraine signed with its partners were only politically binding. So the American agreement will be legally the strongest. Ihor Zhovka, deputy head of the Office of the President, diplomatic advisor for the, uh, to the President of Ukraine, explained to European Pravda. Which means that there's... There's another element to this that the UN, this, you know, if it, I guess if Trump comes along and breaks it, then actually there might be consequence with the UN. Now, it might be something that Trump wouldn't give a damn about, but there, there's a, there's an argument to say that this is a stronger agreement than the other agreements that we've seen, which are purely bilateral and only involve, you know, a political agreement that, that itself might, might, only last the length of the administration that signed that agreement or at least it is weaker than, than this one so this is good news um diplomat also said that the u.s intends to further strengthen the binding nature of the agreement through its approval in the congress so this is going to be interesting if this has to happen but remember that the 60 billion dollar bill did get overwhelming support by bipartisan support it's just that loud minority um the required congressional resolution will be enacted in both chambers. This will not be technically ratified because an executive agreement of this nature does not require. But we will gain political and legal support from Congress. So I don't quite know what that means. Um, will it need to be voted on in the same way as, as uh, the appropriations bill? The agreement entered into force immediately after Zelensky and President Biden signed it. And it will be valid for 10 years. This means it will remain in force for the tenure of at least two U.S. presidents. Quote, the agreement stipulates that it is implemented by the U.S. administration, regardless of the president's name. OK, so there's a lot still to be cleared up because a lot of people are saying, well, Trump can just rip it up and then here we've got the idea that actually it'll be binding past that it could be something to do with the UN and it, if there's if there's ratification from Congress then then that will have a, a longer binding effect um, but irrespective of those details the general sense is that this is a really significant piece of agreement and it could be a bit of a game changer like if you suddenly have both air defense and air, air, aircraft operating in significant numbers in Ukraine, then you get air superiority. And if you get air superiority, you can then start winning the war militarily. It's huge, huge. And, I, and I, it's annoying that it's taken so long to realize this. I mean, we were talking about this years ago. Like, the Russia made the mistake of, of invading without getting air superiority. And as a result, two and a half years la later, they can't win the war. If they'd gone in and absolutely smacked the Ukrainian air defenses and aircraft to the point where they were completely destroyed, Russia could have, Russia could have won this war with, with a lot more ease. Okay, Belden. So we know that Biden told other countries they had to wait down the list. There, um, Biden asked about Ukraine requesting his permission to strike deeper into Russia. So not change position there. But this follows on from a re report from Politico on mounting pressure that the president is facing from members of his own party. So you got a top Biden ally, ally Senator Chris Coons from uh, Delaware, Democrat said he is pressing Zelensky's case with the White House. I quote, I respect the president's concerns and the concerns of many about how deep the into Russia to facilitate strikes. But I think Zelensky's made reasonable requests and we ought to pursue them. Uh, Kuhn said. Now, House Foreign Affairs Committee ranking member, Representative Gregory Meeks, 
Democrat from New York said, and Senator Richard Blumenthal said after meeting with Zelensky last week during the 80th anniversary of D-Day invasion in Normandy that they've changed their minds and feel as Kuhnstad does as well. So when you've got people in the Foreign Affairs Committee also having previously been more cautious, saying they've changed their minds, actually that bodes well for changes to the restrictions on the Ukrainians. Now, from an American point of view, this is fascinating. So I found this uh, this is the Department of Defense Office of Inspector General. So the IG basically oversees appropriations packages and checks whether everything is, is going all right. And we appear to have a similar situation that we had previously where we had $6 billion worth of overvaluation that meant that all oh, suddenly there's $6 billion to spend on extra stuff going to Ukraine. Well, it's happened again, it, it, it appears. So this came out yesterday with, uh, saying, in our audit of DOD's re-evaluation of support provided to Ukraine, we found that the DOD did not comply with federal law and overvalued defence articles provided to Ukraine by $1.9 billion. To uh, find out more, you can follow that link. I haven't done that. In our audit of the defence assets provided to Ukraine, we found that the DOD overvalued vehicles aircraft and other depreciating items by 653 million and overvalued missiles ammunition and other uh, items by an additional 1.25 billion in other words there, there's your 1.9 billion um that's 1.9 billion dollars worth of kit one assumes that can suddenly go to ukraine that that money is now because this is kind of moving money from one column to another it's not like real money it's it's the value which is subjective anyway and they, they've got certain protocols for valuing equipment and if it's done on book rather than whatever the different ways of doing it. i talked about this in a previous video um it it's it's not like you are paying more for this it's just like this is how we value it the only way it costs you is 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 that if you would have sold this to another country and they would have paid you that money for for that uh, yeah, that's what that's where it's meaningful and money coming in. It's the opportunity cost of giving it to Ukraine and not selling it to the country. That kind of costs you, but it's an opportunity cost. It's not an actual cost that that is coming out of your bank account. It's like, well, we would have got this, and now we're not going to get this. Okay, so in a sense, this is just great news. This is not it's not free money, of course, but but this is well, I don't know. They suddenly have one point nine billion dollars of stuff they can they can give to ukraine and if that's obsolete equipment then that's brilliant if that's a whole bunch more bradley's then that's brilliant now it could be that actually they they put that into usai and put an order in to raytheon for to rtx for to patriot systems that would be fantastic and of course then that does you know, that is a, an outlay of money um in in that case but but you do have this extra 1.9 billion potentially which is Fantastic. Um, okay, so going on to other aid, Zelensky said that China will not sell weapons to Russia. Okay, so we've gone through that one. Uh, we're going to just have German aid to Ukraine give us a synopsis because he said, look, just because I saw so many false reports of what other countries, especially Germany, have given Ukraine in terms of Patriot batteries, components and missiles, I want to give you a decent overview of what has actually been delivered, pledged, and what is just based on the media reports now. So delivered. So this is what Ukraine has. They have two Patriot batteries from Germany, two Patriot launchers from Germany. So that's an extra couple of launchers, one Patriot radar from Germany um, and two Patriot launchers from the Netherlands. So those are extra launchers and one Patriot battery from the US. Now, I'd forgotten that Germany had given an extra radar and launchers. So if you if you think that that's almost another um, Patriot battery that Germany has given, just is minus a few maybe the the uh the energy component and the command and control component i i i'm forgetting what the exact um components of patriot batteries are but actually germany's already given more than than we had previously what than i had previously remembered then you got the one us battery and a couple of launches from the netherlands there okay so pledge germany has pledged another battery but then has said we ain't going to give any more um uh, which is this this one here so media reported a, a fourth one ple pledged by all possibly on the way from germany the fourth in total um but 
I don't think that is happening, according to what Boris Pistorius said yesterday. Anyway, back to Pledged, a Patriot radar from the Netherlands as part of the initiative, and three Patriot launchers from the Netherlands as part of the initiative as well. Now, uh, we also have another Patriot battery has been pledged by the US, according to media, um, and it's New York Times are the first person to break that, but that, that looks like a genuine... Uh, pledge as opposed to the German German ones not looking like it's happening. Okay, in terms of missiles, it's of course difficult to get real figures, and as far as I can tell, only as far as I know, only Germany is public about how much they are sending to Ukraine. I would just like to mention that, of course, the US sent much more to Ukraine and is the only country uh, that can really keep the Ukrainian batteries alive. Although Germany did not send a lot, I also hope I haven't forgotten any country that has sent a few missiles. So delivered we've had 32 patriot missiles sent from denmark germany netherlands and norway 220 missiles also sent just by germany uh, a number of patriot missiles sent by the netherlands was unknown 12 patriot missiles sent by spain and 12 missiles is that's a maybe a weekend's worth uh, an unknown number of patriot missiles sent by the us that could also be an awful loss of missiles right uh pledged 668 patriot missiles from denmark germany netherlands and norway and an unknown number of further missiles pledged by Germany as part of the third battery, and then an unknown number of missiles, Patriot missiles pledged by the US. Um, so the additional radar is not an officially confirmed delivery from Germany. So that's one that we mentioned right at the beginning, uh, just to give you the full details. In the conversation between top military officers of the German Bundeswehr that was intercepted, if you remember, G Russia released that recording of the Germans talking about striking the Kerch Bridge. They also talked about... Um, the chief of the German Air Force, Lieutenant General uh, Ingo Gerhardt, said that Germany had delivered three Patriot radars out of 12. 12 is everything we have to Ukraine. As two were part of the two battery supplies, Germany must have delivered an extra radar. This also makes sense in the context of Germany's Minister of Defence, Pistorius, saying that at the beginning of May 2024 that the Ukrainian Patriot radar had not been working for some time. Therefore, Germany could have replaced the not working radar with the extra secret delivery. Uh, the aim of the Dutch initiative is is that various countries provide individual components of a Patriot battery uh, with the intention of assembling an entire battery and delivering it to Ukraine. And then finally, some another append uh, appendix here saying, or footnote saying, some media reports spoke of slightly more. Uh, this is in relation to the 12 batteries from, uh, sorry, missiles sent from Spain that I said is basically a weekend's worth. Others of exactly a dozen Patriot missiles that were pledged or delivered to Ukraine. It's also very unclear how many missiles from the two separate announcements have been already delivered. The fact is that there are at least a dozen and some have already been delivered. So that's a really good overview. Thanks for germinating to Ukraine. Go and check out my previous live with him. Uh, I've spoken to him now uh, three times. He's also, up, or not he, him, although no, no doubt he has as well. German, the German government, they are really transparent. German AT Ukraine said this before. He said, you know, when you have someone like French AT Ukraine, there's another Twitter handle, it's much more difficult for them to generate information because the French are really, uh, op they're really opaque. They're really secret about what they actually give to Ukraine, as many countries are. Germany is the complete opposite. German Germany is insanely transparent. It's like, this is what we're giving and we're putting it on the government website. And so therefore, German aid to Ukraine often has enough content to be giving us information on a daily basis because that German website is getting updated. He links to it from his own website. And it means he has just a, a lot of content to discuss. And that's really useful for us. The German government approach is, is transparent. Um, so anyway, they've updated the list of military aid delivered to Ukraine. Now, I don't know the time frame of these that's the that's the uh, frustrating thing but anyway recently they must have delivered 20 marder infantry fighting vehicles 10 leopard 105 tanks one air defense system for slm and, and one sls so that's a medium and a short range three high mars multiple launch rocket systems so they sent them now that's interesting um uh, because they, they're talking about getting hold of three high Mars and now they're there. Uh, then you've got all sorts of like smaller equipment, uh, ammunition and smoke shells and anti-drone sensors, bridge pavers, engineering vehicles, evacuation vehicles, demining vehicles, uh, amps systems to the plug-in system for helicopters to release flares and laser um not jamming, but sends missiles off in, in wrong directions and whatnot, and all sorts of other, other kit. I mean, go and check it out there, rescue boats, um, 
uh, lots of trucks, Zetro's trucks, etc., etc. So Germany's still doing an insanely good job of supporting uh, Ukraine. Now, Thierry Breton, the European Commissioner for the Internal Market, uh, said about the European production of artillery ammunition, quote, we will have a production capacity of 1.7 million shells at the end of this year and more than 2 million next year. The goal is to reach 2.5 million. I think we should be there around the turn of 2025. That's, that's pretty incredible. Europe have really picked up there. And of course, the Ukrainians need all of that and more. They need American, a British, European, Australian, South Korean, like all will help. The IFU uh, is to provide... The that's the fund international fund for Ukraine, uh, Ukraine with one five two mil shells worth three hundred seventy six million dollars. Ukraine will receive these this supply worth um, three hundred seventy six million dollars uh, from the IFU. Now I don't know um, whether that's anything to do with the European production where those shells are coming from. Ukraine will receive one five two mil projectiles. Uh, that's the IFU one I think because it's exactly the same amount three hundred fifty million euros. Um, from the Netherlands. So it could be that the Netherlands are... Yeah, but then it's the International Fund for Ukraine. I don't know. Anyway, here, Dutch MOD emphasised the exact number of shells and the time of delivery are not reported for security reasons. So either that's two identical tranches of artillery ammunition or the IFU version is the Dutch version, but the, 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 the package, but then... It wouldn't be the IFU, it would be Dutch. So, yeah, not not 100% sure about what's going on there. Uh, now, after receiving positive feedback from Ukraine on the performance of the CV-90s, these are the BA systems produced, or those Swedish-produced um, infantry fighting vehicles that are supposedly the best in the world. There are updated versions of these still. Uh, but they've had good feedback about them on from the battlefield. Sweden and the Netherlands are planning to increase production of the combat vehicle for Ukraine. So that's really good news because, of course, we've got the production of Lynx and Fuchs within. So an infantry fighting vehicle that's decent and the, an APC within Ukraine by Rheinmetall. Then we've got BAE systems producing stuff. Then we've got all those Bradleys setting back in, in the US that can be tapped. Uh, and uh, and then all, all sorts of other articles from um, elsewhere as well. Uh, Canada will hand over CRV-7 missiles to Ukraine, uh, which the head of the state security service, Budanov, called for handing over. So they've actually got an, a whole bunch of these. They are handing over 2,000, which is 2,300, which is great. But as you'll see, Colby Badoyle's like, and the rest. As Canadian Defence Minister Bill Blair reported, Ukraine will receive 2,300 such missiles that were previously used by the Canadian Air Force. These these go back quite a long way, the CRV-7. Didn't they have like, the longest range at the time they were bought out, brought out? But anyway, pretty old missiles, but are going to be super useful, and especially when you've had like the Zuni missiles that have been exhausted that the US have provided to Ukraine for sending unguided missiles off fixed-wing aircraft, uh, particularly. Um, in addition, Norway transferred to Ukraine a batch of 81 millimeter mortar bombs, which I talked about, but it's worth 27.8 million dollars uh, euros, and hand grenades worth 3.1 million euros. Ammunition for sniper rifles at 190 thousand euros. So lots of stuff being given. Of course, with Ramstein taking place and the G7, there's there's all all sorts of announcements being made. So Canada is sending these 2,300 unarmed rockets. Um, and other arms to Ukraine. But it took, says Colby, two years for the government to figure out if they could send Ukraine just 2,000 of these 70mm CR7 rockets. They really need to do better. Ukraine has asked for all 80,000 of them, regardless of their condition. Uh, I guess Canada can just hold some back to... I, I wonder whether they do things like this, right? Instead of giving them all in one, where we like get a pat on the back and we've given all this stuff. And again, it's like the Bradleys, where we gave all 80,000 now, you could have those warehouses being targeted. So we give you 2,300 now, and then 5,000, and then 6,000. Then each time we give you stuff, we get a pat on the back, rather than just one pat on the back and everyone forgets about it. I don't know. And it's also it's safer to... to not drip feed, but consistently feed. Uh, so it's kind of just in time. You, you get the equipment when you need to use it, but, so you don't have to store it, and then that becomes dangerous. The state-owned Ukrainian defense industry company signed a memorandum with US-based Amentum Services on plans to set up a joint enterprise to restore and maintain American-made armored vehicles, the company said on June the 13th. So this is another example, just like we've seen with Rheinmetall and others, of having... Um, uh, 
indigenous ma uh, manufacturing and maintenance plants within facilities within Ukraine. Uh, fantastic. Um, okay, Ukrainian company A3 Tech has tested a heavy demining machine, the DOK um, ING MV10, assembled and l partially localized in Ukraine. Interesting. It's uh, actually that's a nice doable size. Some of those are like really big, and then we go demining machines like really vary in size. That's like a relatively small one, even though that looks big. If you look at the size of that person there. Uh, heavy demining machines. It was tested uh, for performance in compacted soil and sand. Quite heavy demining machines significantly speed up the clearance of territories and increase the safety for personnel working in the field. They've proven their effectiveness in Kharkiv region and in the south of Ukraine, said Yulia Sviridenko, Minister of the Economy for Ukraine. So next we have uh, a thread on the S500. I'm not going to read the thread out to you because it's quite technical, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you my interpretation of the thread. So the S500, which is this the, the best air defense system that the Russians have, particularly for taking out ballistic missiles, and it it was they only have one battery that was up in Moscow. It's been brought down to Crimea, and that tells you something. They're in a desperate desperate situation. Um, what can I say? So it developed out the S300. The S300 had these different variants. And one of the variants of the S300, which the S300, was it the V, um, uh, became the S400. Essentially, there's very little difference, uh, just sort of renamed or whatever. Um, and, one of, and also the S500 developed out of the S300. What you have is, by the looks of it, two, just two tubes on a, on a launcher and that's because they had to op overcompensate or they mitigated for some of the challenges in high altitude uh, by having a rocket or a missile with bigger boosters it's a much bigger footprint it's sort of four times bigger than the FAD missiles t-h-a-a-d missiles thads that fire at, at um, missiles in a high altitude so these are these are big old missiles, and I don't think they're particularly good, really, um, compared to what they could be, and you might think what they should be. Um, just uh, so I roughly estimate, says John Bridge, uh, Ridge, albeit without modelling, this likely increased its defended footprint to sixty to eighty kilometres. So that's they have to rather than with cruise missiles that are firing, are flying low to the ground. When you're talking about ballistic missiles, they go up and in, often into the atmosphere to come down. And so you're, it's all about firing missiles in up there rather than over there. Uh, and it, the, the those. Uh, those two situations mean that you have two very different sets of needs for your air defense missiles. And anyway, um, just he says, like, it's comically enormous missile for a mobile theater missile platform. Um, have a larger form factor than, yeah, two of these have a larger form factor than eight MIM 401 Talon rounds for a THAAD launcher. So, yeah, so four times bigger there. Um, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Worse end game maneuverability. Um, yeah, all of the all of the figures look to be worse than equivalent sort of missile systems like the FAD system. So it just is nothing to be crazy worried about. And indeed, if you've only got one, uh, so yeah, it's got 150 gram kilogram warhead. Greatly contributes to its volume and mass as well. And so. Um, However, prior to uh, yeah, consistent lack of technical maturity that have only been deployed in fairly limited service. So, like the whole the whole thing is is as he says, particularly poorly optimized. It's a poorly optimized uh, system. So, I wouldn't worry too much about an S five hundred battery. And I I would think that if you knew where it was, you just send over twenty drones to try and suck away all other kinds of air defense that might be protecting that air defense system or or you just hit them with drones and then send over a dozen ATACMs and I don't know if you've got four launchers that's eight missiles you fire them and then you're done um, I don't know how many launchers they have but you just need to send more ATACMs they got launchers and then yeah 
jobs are good. In. I know you can say that for any system, but this, with other systems where you might have four launch four tubes on each launcher, or maybe even more, depending on what we're talking about. You know, here you're really limited with the S five hundred. So, yeah, I think. I would expect that we're going to see an S500 battery uh, being taken out in the uh, in the near future, or at least I hope so. Now, uh, Ukrainian border police have caught 41 men trying to flee across Moldova. They were hidden in a grain van trying to evade military call-ups. So that goes to show uh, the effect mobilization has on the population, particularly of men. Uh, here we have 41 trying to escape into Moldova. And they've been caught and probably will end up going to front lines. But there will be an awful lot of people trying to leave Ukraine at the moment. And here we have a quick take thread from Sam Bendit, who has an expertise in drones. So quick take on the Russian deliberation about the drone evolution influenced by the war in Ukraine. Main points below. The Ukraine war became a triumph for small drones. Previously, everyone was afraid of Bayraktars, but now everyone hides when FPV drones appear. So the first person view drones, the kamikaze drones usually. So modern air defense systems have made low speed, medium altitude drones practically useless. Evolution has turned the Bayraktar drones from a super weapon into an expensive reconnaissance aircraft. Smaller fixed wing Baba Yagas and FPV drones currently rule the battlefield. The most dangerous and promising drones are FPV drones. The number of drones on the battlefield is growing rapidly. The apogee of their use will be autumn winter 2024. The number of FPV drones will become such that a motocross motorcycle will become an extremely dangerous means of transportation and there's almost nothing to say about other equipment. The Zelenka typical military vehicles will fail and the infantrymen will have nowhere to hide. But is an FPV drone the ideal weapon? No. Although it does cause a lot of problems the effectiveness of any weapon resembles a parabola and now we can predict the further evolution of drones it's important to note the fpv drone has evolved into an air defense weapon first it will mow down the ranks of baba yaga drones this clumsy and slow moving bomber is already shot down by experienced fpv drone crews it's more difficult to fight reconnaissance fixed wings but the Ukrainians have proven that it is possible. FPV already flies at 20 kilometers, which is greater than the range of many air defense systems. Reducing the number of reconnaissance drones, such as Mavics and fixed wing drones, will eventually make the use of the FPV drones less ubiquitous, and it will be a little easier to be on the battlefield. The FPV fighter concept will evolve, and with the help of automated systems, FPV drones will begin to destroy each other. In a confrontation between equal opponents, this will further reduce the effectiveness of the the drone then tanks with lasers and active protection against drones will appear on the battlefield this will allow military leaders to once again plan tank breakthrough tactics in a few years the fpv drone will transform from a super weapon into a weapon equal in effectiveness to an atgm but this is a glance into the future for now dropping a shell munition uh, from a drone is more effective than a protective arm armor this state of affairs will last for several years. This is a window of opportunity for China. Only our neighbour can produce drones by the millions. Hundreds of tanks cannot resist a swarm of drones. And if the Chinese do not realise their advantage, then they will have to wait for the next window of opportunity for several more decades. So, um, uh, uh, correction to point for Zelensky in this context is vegetation, not vehicles. Um, so, that yeah, take that into account. Right, this is to say that drones have evolved incredibly they're super uh, effective but there is a lot of dependence on reconnaissance drones and if you can overcome if you can mitigate against reconnaissance drones then you can mitigate against drones in general um drones will eventually develop to blowing each other up and we're already seeing that to some degree with baba yagas and the octocopters and the reconnaissance drones being taken out by fpv drones smashing into them and blowing them up um and eventually the vehicles will Ad adapt and evolve so that they have lasers and anti-drone weaponry on board that can effectively mitigate the use of these drones but right now the the ukrainians have have an advantage here and it is it is i think having a serious effect on the battlefield it means that that i mean neither side can really advance easily uh, on the on the battlefield without taking huge losses now the russian air force is using themselves a new type of kh-101 cruise missile with cluster munitions these submunitions were found in the territory of the vasilik settlements uh, we heard about this a little bit the other day and the idea is if you blow up the 
uh, the cruise missile that they can still release all these submunitions and come down and cause all sorts of problems for anything that's that's below so yeah cluster munition cruise missiles there and uh, north korea has now supplied russia with as many artillery shells as nato has supplied ukraine and, uh, and putin's going there next week to get more there i've seen some rumors he might be going to uh to north korea also to get infantry fighting vehicles or similar uh, there's uh, a theory that they're pretty much going to run out of bmps soon and uh he, russia desperately need some material not just artillery ammunition but you know what are we doing about north korea giving this many shells to uh to russia kim sent russia millions of artillery shells south korea says shin uh, uh, I think the number is, yeah, 5 million artillery shells. North Korea sent containers that could hold. So we don't nef- definitely know. There could be all sorts of other equipment in there. We know that they've sent some Russian, uh, some North Korean missiles into Ukraine. But it could be as many as 5 million uh, shells, which is absolutely staggering. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Really appreciate all your support. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.